Hi, folks. My name is Skip Barr. I'm a solutions architect here at NetFoundry. And welcome to today's video series. It's the first part of a five part series that's going to help you with getting started with NetFoundry networking, uh, essentially taking you through uh, all the kind of implementation steps of um, setting up endpoints, setting up cloud resources, and setting up the network itself and getting access to the platform uh, cloud console. Um, so I wanted to make sure you are aware that you have all this information available to you online at support.netfoundry.io and all of our software can be downloaded from netfoundry.io slash downloads. So the documentation pretty much has everything for getting started, uh, specific information on edge routers, sizing guides, endpoints, you know, how to install endpoints. And then it also has information on setting up services and app WANs. And uh, that's kind of the, the flow that this these videos will take. This first video will be a little bit longer because I'll do a little bit of explaining uh, kind of the overview uh, and the big picture of a, of a network. And um, it takes a little while to set up the, uh, the controller and the associated um, fabric routers as well. Um, do have to have a few things uh, kind of in a checklist or kind of an assumptions that um, you have a cloud account. You, this is a, we're going to be using AWS today, but you can use it any cloud account you want that you feel familiar with. And uh, you know you might you may need to have a cloud SSH keys and an SSH client because you will we will have to uh, you know log into our our software package um, to Ubuntu image and uh, access that uh, to register it on the network. I will be doing, if you're interested, uh, I will have on, I think it's in section three, we'll be doing a hypervisor install if you want to de deploy this in your data center. I will be doing an ESXi implementation uh, as part of this in a uh, series. So please follow along with that one if you want, would like that. And, uh, you know, otherwise you don't have to, you know, use it. Uh, so another thing you should consider, you, you will, you have to be you have to have direct outbound access um, for all the software to 80 ports or 80 and 443 and 62 62 going outbound and if you have any type of secure web gateway or casb or any type of ssl inspection or web proxying you want to have that disabled or have it bypassed whitelisted in some way that we can get a clean uh you know visibility out to the internet because we do use uh, the internet as the underlay for uh, our network so let's get let's, let's have a look at what it may look like. Um, this part one. So what we're going to do is do the overview. Uh, we're going to get access to the platform and we're going to um, create a network. Um, that's kind of the big picture. Uh, if you if you think about you know where all these little Z's are, uh, you know that's kind of it shows you what it might look at look like in an enterprise where you can have the software. If, how deep do you want to you know have? zero trust networking implemented. And of course, this all assumes it's all an internet kind of overlay network. Um, have software on your instances and private subnets. You can install our edge router in your cloud, which we'll do today. Um, you can put it on your laptop, your mobiles. Um, you can build it into the software. That's really the, the, the really, we, as deep as you can get our software, the more secure you will get. And we do encourage uh, customers to, uh, you know, embed the software where possible. If you have access to the code, um, then you can, and it's uh, just purely identity based communications at the, that point. So we're going to put something together like this, a little bit smaller, and it's going to look like this. So uh, I'm going to, like I said, we're going to go through a, a network. We're going to build the platform. We're going to build some fabric routers in the middle that you act as the transit. All of these items, the controller and these two fabric routers in this example, and any and for most part are always managed by NetFoundry and they're in our cloud tenancies. Uh, so we'll, uh, the first part of it will um, build these guys. And then the second part will build our uh, edge router in the AWS cloud. Then we'll build one in a VMware environment and then we'll install the client on a Windows 10 machine. And then we'll set up services to access each of these uh, some windows um, or some web pages within these networks. Um, I did also want to point you in the direction of our, uh, let me get that put up, pulled up. I want to get you, show you the way we have this. So if you look at uh, support.netfoundry.io, like I was saying, we have documentation here. 
it goes through all of this, you know, it's getting started guys, there's different operations, uh, endpoints, edge routers, app wans, like I said, and services. Um, so feel free to peruse that and kind of follow along if you're going to go through this on your own. Um, and we also mentioned the downloads, netfoundry.io slash downloads. You can find uh, all this software can be downloaded right off the internet. You don't have to have an account set up uh, or with the um, with us to, to download it. So I just want to point that out for you. <clears throat> So let's just uh, assume, you know, you've kind of gone through here, you've looked through our website, you have, you know, some use case you're interested in the cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, some specifics like SAP, or maybe your edge, or maybe just a VPN replacement for remote workers or some extra net functionality. Um, you decide you, decide you want to um, go move forward, so you can, you can just hit start now, and then you'll get popped to a page like this. You'll notice it has 14 days, free trial. So you can come in here, you type your name, like the country, I'll do, what do we do today? Something close, okay, Belize, uh, and then I'll put in my email and hit next. So as so I get started, I'll say demo with skip. That'll be the name of my organization. And then I'll get a custom URL right here, demo with skip, that staging dash, dash nfconsole.io. And then I hit next. So what it does, it, Builds me an account with the platform. It will send me an email that says, uh, welcome to the, your organization. It's spinning up, sent you a link. Sometimes it pops in here. There it is, demo with, e um, demo with skip. So you complete the sign up by pressing that. And then you accept that. This invite will expire in seven days or so. Be sure to accept that right when you create it. And you will, if it's your first time, sign up right here. You'll put in an email and you'll create a password and hit sign up. Since I already have an account with us, I'll just say log in and I'll just use my account to log in. So immediately upon logging in, you'll be prompted to create a new network. And essentially this will create a, a network controller that's dedicated. It's kind of the brains, it's the control plane. Uh, of the entire network. It, uh, it handles all the authorization, authentication, and just uh, the, all the control plane uh, aspects of the SDN network. So we'll say demo with skip network, and we'll hit create. This does take about five minutes to spin up in the network. Um, I'll, I'll pause right now and rejoin when this is completed. Okay, so it looks like our network has created. You'll notice that we have a green globe up here. That's, that's uh, in the case that our network is completed. So it says manage networks. Okay, it's provisioned. That's good. Um, so back to our steps here. This is step A. Um, we have created our controller kind of, a, and we have platform access. So um, now we need to build the kind of the middle. This will be the, the transit. And you really want to build these where your user base, your users are, your cloud is, your data center in those regions. You can pick any cloud. This example shows AWS and Azure. You can use uh, any of the other um, cloud providers if it makes sense uh, and you're in their region and uh, it works um, uh, geographically for you. Uh, so next thing we have to do is we have to build these guys and these guys are all this infrastructure, the controller, as well as these two middle mile, we call them routers, are controlled by NetFoundry and you don't have to manage them. You just get to create them in this console and they serve as your forwarding engine. So let's get back to our environment here. There we go. All right, so let's build those and then we'll do a little tour of the, uh, the web console here. So we'll go to edge routers. And we'll go, all right, we'll call this one fabric router. Or you can call them public router. I'll call it fabric router east. And I'm going to make an attribute for this so I can group them together. So they just function as one fabric and everybody has equal access to them. We'll call it fabric. We'll call it net foundry hosted. These routers are the ones we will install in your cloud VPC and in your data center with a VCPE image. So we'll go NetFoundry hosted, and I'll just select uh, AWS US East one, and then I'll hit create. I want to have redundancy at all times, so I'll put another one. 
and I'll call this one Fabric Router West, like that. And I'll put him, just click in this box and it'll go Fabric, good. I'll come back over to NetFoundry Hosted and I'll just put, I'll go, I'll like put one in Oracle here. I'll put Oracle, uh, Oracle San Jose. There we go, hit Create. There, so those guys will take, you know, five or eight minutes to uh, provision. And the one thing we have to do, and this is a very important to remember, is that when you created these fabric routers, now we have to kind of give the ability for endpoints to transit these two fabric routers um, in this picture. So if we want this guy to be able to get to these uh, clouds and the on-prems, we have to give ability for that to happen. So that's given via a policy. So we'll come up here, hit policy. And we'll hit new policy. And you can call it something like default. There's a lot you can do with this, but just for getting started, this is a, a fine policy. Well, so what attribute, what, what edge routers do we want to have in our, in our fabric? We only have two. We could pick them one at a time like this, but we'll just select this grouping right here. And that puts both of them in my policy. What endpoints? We don't have any endpoints created yet, but we have a catch all. We can use hashtag, type in pound sign, all hit enter, and then that, now we have all. So that means it's implied with all of our endpoints that all means any endpoint that gets created will be able to use that without having to be specifically added to this endpoint attribute. But you could do it by groups, uh, hit create. Okay, now we've essentially built the network. We have, uh, once those are stood up, then I'll have the controller and the two fabric routers with a policy allowing everybody to communicate over this network. And so I'll pause while I let those guys build and we'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like our two fabric routers have created, we have green dots next to them. They are provisioned, they are registered on the network. So essentially we've built the, this, this network right here. It's ready to be used. So let's take a look at the, at the console that we have right now and uh, go back over here. So everything you see, can be uh, close, you know, operated through this this green globe up here. So you can see, we have app WANs, services, endpoints, edge routers. I have all that up here too. So there's multiple ways to get to places. So you can say, uh, you know, app WANs go there. You can go to services here. Services and app WANs are on the same tabs. Edge routers, edge routers, and edge router policies are on the same page. And then endpoints are by themselves here. So from the dashboard, you can kind of get a feel for, uh, you know, everything provisioned correctly. Edge router policy is provisioned. Uh, we don't have any traffic yet. We don't have any endpoints yet, but we have our two routers and we have one policy and we have our controller up because we have our network built and our managed networks. So everything, everything network centric happens up through this section down here. Notice there's another sidebar on the left. This is all organizational based. So anything to do with this console, the web platform itself. If you want to add users, um, don't want to admin this, you can add a user here. You can give them different roles where they can be an admin or read only. Uh, you know, if you want to have somebody who can do, uh, you know, like a knock group that wants to be able to look at this, but not you know, do anything that affects the actual network. Um, if you want to have API account, you can create an API key set up here. Um, just hit generate token, generate your tokens, and you can interact with all of this via API and you don't have to log into this and everything is programmable. Um, also, there's some reporting and analytics things in here. So that's kind of, uh, we're going to spend most of our time uh, uh, dealing with services, endpoints, and app WANs uh, from this point uh, forward. And uh, that'll be the end of this session. And the next session, we'll be installing our uh, edge router software in AWS. So it'd be good to start thinking of a, of a VPC that you might have a web server, a test machine of some application that you can install our, our edge router within that VPC so we can uh, you know, get access to it. I, I just have web pages up right now, but um, so you can start thinking about that. So um, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next session. Thank you.